from your story it's time for people to listen and to hear and to soak in your story because it is so powerful and I need God to get the glory out of my story and the only way to do that is to tell it to all of you amazing supporters out there so we are going to do kind of like a bible study plus testimony story just because everything will tie in at the end I have not rehearsed any of this I mean literally God was like go and I put the camera up and I'm like okay let's go so we're here. If you're not subscribed to the family, make sure you do. We have such amazing content coming every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at 6 p.m. So I don't want to speak too much. Let's bow our heads. Let's get into the presence of God together because whew, he is in this room and he is with you as well. Father God, first and foremost, thank you. Thank you for leading this person on the other side of the screen to this video. Lord, take away all of me and fill me with Father God, I need you to get the glory out of this. I am nothing but a vessel and I trust you. I trust you to deliver this in the way that you have spoken to me. So it won't be my own words, but yours alone that fill me. Father God, we just pray for the person on the other side of the screen that my story, my testimony can help them gain an understanding for the power and the glory of who you are. Thank you, Lord, for this day. And in this day, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Woo! It's gonna get real. Let me just say that. I had to hurry and put some makeup on because I looked crazy the way I was crying this morning. <laughs> and I know I'm gonna cry again, so we'll just we'll just pick up from there. So this is gonna be a little lengthy, but I need you to hold on because there is purpose behind everything that I'm saying. So I use my one year woman's Bible. I will link it down below. It's from Amazon. It really helps me to articulate the word of God and helps me to soak it in because I know the King James girl, it, it gets a little rough. It gets a little wordy, but this really um, kind of just helps to break it down a little better. So we're going to be in John 11, 1 through 54. Obviously, it's not the exact same if you're following a New Living's or a King James, but it's kind of along the same lines. So if you want to listen, if you want to read along, it's up to you. Here we go, John 11, 1 through 54. A man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sisters, Mary and Martha. This is a Mary who later poured the expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was sick. So the two sisters sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God, so that the Son of God will receive glory from this. So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. But his disciples objected. Rabbi, they said, only a few days ago, the people in Judea were trying to stone you. Are you really going to go back there? Jesus replied, there are 12 hours of daylight every day. During the day, people can walk safely. They see because they have light of this world. But at night, there is a danger of stumbling because they have no light. Then he said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. The disciples said, Lord, if he is sleeping, won't he get, soon, won't he get better soon? They thought Jesus just meant Lazarus was simply sleeping, but Jesus meant Lazarus had died. So he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I wasn't there, for now you will really believe. Come, let's go see him. Thomas, nicknamed twin, said to his fellow disciples, let's go too and die with Jesus. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had been dead in his grave for four days. Bethany was only a few miles down the road from Jerusalem, and many of the people had come to counsel Martha and Mary in their loss. When Martha had got the word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary stayed in the house. 
Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said, he will rise again when everyone else rises on the last day. Jesus told her, hold on, sweetheart. I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live, even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord, she told him. I have always believed you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who has come into the world from God. Then she returned to Mary. She called Mary aside from the mourners and told her, The teacher is here and wants to see you. So Mary immediately went to him. Jesus had stayed outside the village at the place where Martha had met him. When the people who were at the house counseling Mary saw her leave so hastily, they assumed she was going to Lazarus', Lazarus grave to weep, so they followed her there. When Mary arrived there and saw Jesus, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would have not died. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him, and he was deeply troubled. Where have you put him, he asked. They told him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. The people who were standing nearby said, see how much he loved him? But some said, this man healed a blind man. Couldn't he just have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was still angry as he arrived at the tomb, a cave with a stone rolled across its entrance. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. But Martha, the dead man's sister, protested, Lord, he has been dead for four days. The smell is terrible. Jesus responded, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believed? So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me. But I said it out loud for the sake of these people standing here so they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped in a head cloth. Then Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. <sighs> Family, I grew up in an extremely small town, about 70 to 80 people in one graduating class. I was definitely overlooked. I grew up in a dysfunctional home to say the least with spirits of addiction depression anxiety anger frustration so much that simply you could say unqualified me for who I am now I grew up trying to cope in the most counterproductive ways from smoking a lot of weed to giving myself to men who didn't deserve it, to negative self-talk, allowing suicidal thoughts into my mind, to the day when I was 16 years old. I wasn't speaking to my mother at this time. It had been about a year since we talked. I felt abandoned and lost. I was a little girl with direction and I felt alone at 16 years old with my back pressed up against my bedroom door pill bottles right out in front of me that's the day I was going to make the decision to take my own life as I was texting everybody their goodbyes telling them I could not bear this weight any longer. Something I never felt in my life came upon me. I mean, the ultimate peace. Peace where I had no idea where it came from because I never felt something like this. But it was like this hug. This hug that I can't explain. Now, I knew a little bit about the Bible, but definitely not enough to know verses by memory. But the verse came 
came to my mind on this day that I had never heard before, and I know it was God speaking to me, telling me, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope in the future. I went into my closet and found this Bible that was buried under a whole bunch of clothes, and I circled that verse, and to this day there are mascara stains all on that page because that was the day I gave my life to Jesus. No, I was not perfect from that day on. I still fell and made so many mistakes. I still stumbled and tried to get myself back up. But over that time, I gained a friend. Over those years, I gained someone who will never leave nor forsake me. So if you looked at my story, you would say, this girl doesn't fit somebody who should be speaking and preaching the gospel. There was so much quote unquote wrong with her. It seemed like she was dead, put in her grave for four days with dirt covering her in a tombstone. But God said, not my child. So in my deepest, darkest valley, a man named Jesus That in a time when I thought I was going to die, and that it was over, and that there was no evidence telling me my life would mean anything, and that I didn't have any purpose, Jesus said, no, not my child. He said, if I've got to go down to the darkest valley with you, I'm on my way. That when everybody thought I was done, when there was so much evidence stacked up against my life, saying that I would be nothing, saying that I was alone, saying I had no family. God said, not my child. So I relate to this story. I relate to feeling like I am at my wit's end and that there is nothing telling me that I'm going to live. But just like Lazarus got rose from the dead, in that moment, my spirit rose from the dead. I realized I have purpose. I may not have known in that moment what it was, but looking back now, everything seems to make sense. Our plan for our lives are nothing compared to what God has for us. What we think we're supposed to do usually doesn't even fit the magnitude of what God has for us. So when I'm telling you about God, everything I speak is what I've gone through. My life is far from perfect to this day, but it has became so much better with God. I told you guys that I didn't speak to my mother for over a year. That relationship was so tarnished. That relationship was so broken. There was so much distrust. There was so much hurt. There was so much pain connected to that. I didn't think I would ever have a relationship with my mother. But here I am on a daily basis, able to hold my mom and say, Mama, I love you. I'm so proud of her for how she's grown and how God has touched her life and how God has moved in her life. The relationship I had with my father wasn't great as well. But now I can call him and say, Hey, Dad, I love you. Thank you. I was stuck in this addiction with weed for so long, I felt like I needed it. I would say, oh, it helps with my anxiety, it helps with my depression. All along, it just kept me stuck. And now I'm sober. And the only high I get is from God. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you, family, is though your life may not look how you want it to look right now, God doesn't need evidence. God does not work on evidence. Lazarus was dead for four days until Jesus came and rose him. So everything around you may be declared dead, but that means nothing to God. Because when God moves, he's going to move in his timing, and his will will prevail. And let me tell you something, his will is always so much better than ours. 
this has been <laughs> freeing to say the least i want to let you guys know that nobody is perfect though you may see on their instagram and their youtube that they look like they have it all together i still struggle with certain things not what i used to struggle with but new levels come with new devils but all i know is now i've got somebody to help me get through it and his name is jesus christ i need i need you to i need you to understand and know that god is real but more importantly, I need you to understand and know that having a relationship with God is the best thing that you can ever do. Get into your word. People ask me, how do I start this relationship? Understand who God is. Understand who Jesus is. Understand the power and the promises God has on your life. If you're looking for your purpose in the world, I promise you, you will never find it. Because purpose comes from God and God alone. I am in love with Jesus. He saved my life. The little girl I used to be compared to the woman I am now are two completely different people. You will be transformed in this journey for your own good. You will have to let some things go that are really holding you down, but it's for your good. I hope you guys felt something out of this video because it was needed. There's somebody on the other side of the screen who needs God. You've been looking for God and people, places and things, but you need God, baby girl. God's the only person who can take that depression and give you joy. Take that anxiety and give you peace. Take that low self-esteem and give you confidence. That's the kind of God I serve. That's the kind of God I glorify. A God who is true to his promise. If you would just bow your head with me in prayer. And we can close this beautiful, freeing message out. Father God, I pray that the person on the other side of the screen opens their hearts to you. The deepest, darkest parts the parts that they don't even want to talk about, let them open that up to you on tonight. Let them know that you love them. Let them know that you adore them. Let them know that they have a purpose and promise over their life and that you don't need evidence for that purpose to prevail. Lord, let them know that all the hurt and the pain and the abuse and the failure that they went through was only pushing them to their promise. Lord, let them know that their gift comes from you and only you. So if they try to find it in other places, they will crash and burn. Lord, you are our source. You are where we get everything from. Lord, we glorify you in every aspect because you are the ultimate king. Thank you, Lord, that this person will walk free. Thank you that this person will open their mind to a new understanding. Thank you that this new person will get to know God. Thank you that the person on the other side of this screen will have an appreciation and understanding for the word of God that is still true to this day. Lord, the person on the other side of the screen is renewed in your name. Pour your glory out on them. Pour your peace out on them. Pour your understanding out on them. Let them know depression can't have them. Let them know low self-esteem can't have them. Let them know that a broken family can't have them. That all the evidence stacked against them will be used for their good. That what the enemy thought was going to take them out was only used for their good. I said, my God is a God who will take what was used to take me out to take me up. My God is a God who will use what was supposed to break me to build me up. That's the kind of God I serve. And that's the kind of God that will be felt in these people's lives on the other side of the screen. God, you are a good God. Glory, glory, glory. Lord, I thank you for this day and I thank you for the changing of this person's heart, the changing of this person's mind, and the changing of this person's perspective. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. There it is, family. That was a broad story of 
my testimony. I just need you to know that God has got me. Like, I am living proof. God has got me. Seek him, seek the kingdom, and everything.